Hey, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, a little toasty, got the fan on. I've been out here just making a gigantic, huge, disgusting mess. I figured why not just pick up the camera and film a video. No, I'm in the process of cleaning out my fountain and then I was about to put it back together and I realized that I've been asked over and over and over again to do a video about these little quick and easy DIY fountains and I've never done it. I've done fountain projects and vlogs that are like an hour long, but I thought it'd be good to just go over what's going on here. So when people have questions, I don't have to dig through an hour long vlog to find it. And so I don't have to do that to recommend it to people or show them what to watch. So here's what I've been working on. I'm going to try and step over this without tripping or castrating myself. The way that I've done up this fountain over here is what's been convenient for me and not necessarily the best way to do things. I'm a fish keeper. I've had fish my entire life. At one point I had like 40 fish tanks. So I have lots of pumps and parts that have always just laid around and I've just made it work, but I didn't necessarily go the route that I should. So we'll talk about that when we get to that point. But for starters, you need a basin. This is just a 30 or 32 inch shallow container. It's, I don't know, foot deep, maybe a smidge more. It's made out of fiberglass, maybe. I'm not entirely positive. At one point, I used ceramic, which was nice. It looked really great, but it was a bit more upkeep in the winter time and harder to keep clean. I don't leave the fountains running during the winter. However, it's important to make sure that if you're using anything porous, like a ceramic container, that that gets dried out far before you have a hard freeze. And if you don't, it might crack. I don't have to worry about with this container. I do still make sure to dump it so that there's no water in it during the winter time. But this has just been easier and it's more affordable. So that's all that is. It's surrounded by plants. You can barely even see it. Whatever works for you, that's all you need. Just keep in mind how much flow do you want out of your fountain. The more flow and spillage coming off the top of that fountain than the larger of a basin or the wider in diameter you're going to want to be able to accommodate the splatter so that it's not just shooting water all over the place. Real simple, just something to hold water. Here are the whiskey barrel liners. Those work wonderfully. Just surround them with plants if you don't like the way that it looks. You can also bury those. That's a whole different video though. I'm just talking about doing a quick little above ground simple thing here. The barrels work too. You want to put a pond liner or just something in there so the water can't leach back out. A pot that doesn't have a hole in it, which is all that this is. That works great too. Heck, you could probably use some sort of storage tote. Doesn't matter as long as it holds water. So that's the basin. For the actual fountain part, this is where you really can have fun and get creative. I just have this somewhat aged looking, has like a false patina on it, container that I absolutely love. I like that container because it gives things a very natural appearance. And then here I have a support that that pot sits on top of. This is, it's just a pot holder. People used to ask me if it rusts and the answer used to be no. But here we are four years later and it started to rust, which I just noticed during this cleanup. So I am going to have to replace that. My pets drink out of this and the birds drink out of it, so I don't want rusty water in there. But just something to hold the pot at whatever level you want to. Cinder blocks work really, really well. You can use just upside down pots. Those will work fine. Just have to keep in mind that you need to be able to accommodate something with a hole in the bottom. And that's because, where did it go? Because you have to run a tube from your pump. My pump's already in there up underneath this into the bottom of the container. So there's my container. Get that straightened out and looking nice. There we go. There's a hole in the bottom of this pot. I just feed my hose right through the bottom. Can we see that? Yeah, you can kind of see it. I have a plastic bag in here and that's because the hole that's in this is slightly larger than the hole that I drilled in there. This is just a really cheap <laughs> sloppy way to help hold it in place. I figure we have lots of plastic bags laying around. Why not just use that? It works fine. But you can get grommets. Those will work or some of that great stuff foam. You can spray around the tube. That'll work also. I just like something where I can pull it in and out more easily and quickly. And now that I have the hose positioned in there, I just take the other end and insert that into my pump, which I already have running. So I was cleaning this out and letting the pump catch the gunk and leftover debris so I can scoop that out. Get that attached, set it down there on the bottom. Sometimes it'll take a moment to prime itself. There we go. And there it is, a fountain. I usually have to go through and re-level them and work it some more. This is all I want out of my fountain, just a gentle wash of water that goes down the sides. That's all it takes to keep me happy. Love the sound, like the way it looks over that pot. 
looks good. That's simple and easy. Basin, pot, some sort of support, a pump and a tube. You're good. You might need some grommets or uh, grommets not even the right word. So you know the washer plug things to go with the hole to fit that properly, but that's it. All kinds of different iterations and ways you could have fun with this and make it your own. I'm not done yet. I like to have a platform on top for the birds to sit on and play in the water. So what I've done is I've cut out a little piece of a milk crate here so that that will fit down in here snugly. That's to provide some support for this piece of egg crate that I cut out to fit on top of there. Just find this stuff at the hardware store, usually with the like ceiling tiles or lighting stuff. It's in there. It cuts very easily. Be careful. The pieces do get sharp. And this has broken down over time. A long time ago, this fit on here much more snug, but it doesn't anymore, which is why I added that support underneath it. The reason I want that in here is to support all of these rocks. Just create a nice layer of gravel there for the, oops, drop one. The rest of those in there. I like to make sure that there's some that are up and out of the water. That way there's a dry spot for the critters to sit. Or sometimes I'll put a potted plant up there just because I like the way it looks, having a little plant sitting up there. The advantage to having that egg crate in there with the other crate underneath it, so if there's just a small layer of gravel, doing that makes it so much easier to keep this thing clean. When I need to do any maintenance on this fountain, all I have to do is just come over here with a bucket, I pull that gravel out, put it in the bucket. That way all the loose debris can come out, go back down to the basin, and then for the cleaning the basin, I just use a fishnet. And I go through and I scoop the stuff out like maybe once a week. Then about every other month, I'll tilt it and scrub it. That's really all there is to it. It's not much work. I made this just with scrap stuff I had laying around, which is why the pump that I have down there, it's pretty strong for this fountain, but I had it. I don't want to spend money on a new one. It works. The hose that goes into that pump isn't even fitted properly. I have it going inside of the fitting instead of around it, which you really shouldn't do. Like I said, it's been like three or four years and it hasn't been a problem. So, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's fine. The water is still somewhat cloudy on there. That'll clear up over some time. That pump has a little grate on it. You can take that off and hose it off. And that's typically what I do after I do a cleaning like this. It's kind of gross, but as the grate that's around the pump, around the impeller, as that picks up large debris, the large debris helps get the silt out. And then the next day after doing something like this, I'll just take the pump, pull it out real quick, rinse it out and put it back in. And the water's clear. There are lots and lots of different pump kits available now on Amazon. They even, they met the hardware stores usually too, where you'll get your pump and your tubing and all different types of fittings that you'll need to do something like this. Those will work wonderfully for something like this. This pump specifically that I have in there, I believe is made for up to 900 gallons an hour, I believe, which is total overkill for something like this. Like I said, that's just what I had laying around and the spillage and everything stays contained so it's been working out okay i like the amount of flow that i get out of that pump and i can reduce the flow on it which i might do i opened the valve up on the pump all the way to help clear things out but there's a tiny bit more splatter than normal so i might go ahead and crank it back down usually i like to keep my pumps open all the way to help extend the life of the impellers and the motors that the flow really is something you just have to play around with and see what you like and what's going to work for you but well, maybe do a better job hiding your cord there we go. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot better. I had the cord running around the back and I had to move a bunch of electrical stuff around. It doesn't matter. That's it. That's all there is to it. Like I said, tons of different ways that you could do this and have fun with it. Comment down below. What are some tips, tricks, and suggestions you have? Different ways you make your fountains and have fun little areas for the birds or just to have that relaxing sound in the background when you're outside. I have to have the sound of water when I'm hanging out in my backyard. It's just something that helps round out the whole experience of being surrounded by the plants and the nature and then having the sound of that water. It really helps tranquilify the whole experience. Is that a word, tranquilify? I don't know, we'll go with it. Something you can do if you really want to get creative and have fun with this. I have a great big box full of, well, they look like giant ice chunks that I was going to put in place of those stones with a light underneath it. How beautiful would that have been? Having a light in there shining up through those, what look like, big pieces of ice. It would have been beautiful. Having a fountain lit up is always extra special in the evening time. I never got around to it and I had a different fountain I was thinking about using that on. I just think that for the space with the patina and aged look, the fake patina and aged look on that container, it just, that would have looked kind of odd. Even though there's absolutely nothing natural about this, I just like it to look like it's meant to be here or has always been here and not just kind of 
an afterthought that was thrown into this spot. All right, that's enough. You get it. Fountains, they can be pretty easy and simple to set up. Everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. Of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.